Welcome to this video. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the 156 scale Sherman M32B1 armored recovery vehicle. You may get this box with a single sprue or you may get a larger box. Either or, same contents. On here as you can see some graphics of what you're going to get when you've made the kit. You need ABS plastic cement for the plastic parts and cyanoacrylate adhesive, uh, either the gel or a glue. Uh, we do provide those on the website. If you don't have them already, uh, this is for the resin and the pewter parts, or if you're sticking resin or pewter to plastic, you will need a cyanoacrylate adhesive for that, rather than the standard ABS glue. Okay, let's look inside the box. Okay, here's a note. Reiterating what I've just told you about it's a mixed media kit. Uh, if you're new to the hobby, then this might be a bit of a challenge for you as mixed media is sometimes more difficult because you're not just welding two pieces of plastic together um, and cyanoracrylate adhesive, uh, it sets fairly quickly. Um, you can do this kit in two variants. You can have standby mode, which is like the transport mode, or you can have it in the operating mode uh, it's got some little jacks there to hold it in place and obviously the uh, jig for the crane is in a different location and also some of the hatches I believe are in a different position if it's in an active role. That's a breakdown of what you're going to get. This is all the pewter from resin and this is sprue A from a Sherman. Some of the grey parts here which are shaded are not used so you just have to ignore those. The ones in the darker colours here, the ones that we'll be looking at, mainly the chassis. So take a good look through the instructions before you start building. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the kind of detail that you're going to be dealing with. And there's a back page also showing you the options of different positionings, etc. Okay, so I'm going to show you the assembled kit, also um, optional thread or wire to make the crane assembly which is not included. First of all you want to see the main event. If you're not used to using Rubicon resin, it's not your standard cast resin, it's very high detail high quality and as you can see here it's very straight so it's something that we pride ourselves with and the detail that you get with the resin is very very good and a lot of the work is already done for you here with pieces already molded onto the main chassis so there's the upper hole and then we have the turret and let's just find here, let's move these that way you can see them. My fat fingers aren't in the way. If you look here, we have the upper part, it's chamfered and it fits in nicely. And if you don't look at the build quality, there we have a very, very good fit for a resin kit. Very small uh, details on the back there. It's a piece for the uh, back of the hull. The front uh, glasses plate, I believe, with some different tools attached. Another tool kit. Some decking plates. Very, very fine um, checkerboard plating and the winch and then we have a lot of small parts which I'm not going to bring each one up individually but we'll give you some examples of wheels I like this that the hatch when it's open it's already attached I like that a lot because these pieces no matter how you glue them sometimes ping off and this is the closed option We have some smaller parts going down to the smallest piece that you're going to be making which you're going to probably use tweezers for. 
is that one there, just the headlights. So pretty much like a plastic kit, uh, there's very little, if any, cleaning. I think it's already been done at the factory at this stage. Tiny bit of flash there, but nothing major. Very, very nice, crisp. So you get that in the resin. So I'm just gonna move that for a second. This is the pewter. So these are the reason why this is in pewter rather than it all being resin is plainly for durability. These parts were in resin, they can get broken a lot. So there's the main brace. We have the 50 cal, or is it a 30 cal? I'm not sure. Some pulleys. These are very good. And a few pieces that have come loose, like optional hooks, which you can drill through. And some smaller pieces there, cast in pewter, because of that very reason. Okay, so that should give you a fairly good grasp on what you're getting there. And also, this is the standard sprue for a lot of the Shermans that we do, which includes the main hull and the tracks and the bogies, which are the main parts that we're interested in for this build. Let's get assembled. So here we have the uh, assembled M32 recovery vehicle. Um, actually really, really love this kit. Been wanting it to come out for so long. Uh, it went together really, really well uh, for, a, for a mixed media kit. Obviously it does take a uh, slightly higher skill level than just putting a standard plastic kit together because using different adhesives and resin can have a tight, slight um, tendency to uh, shrink or warp slightly, uh, no matter how, how well you try and manufacture it. Um, and the only thing that I would say, say with this kit to, to, um, to get the, the best results is when you're attaching the top hull to the sh lower chassis, Make sure everything's in place first on the lower chassis when you're attaching the front transmission plate and all the other th other things on the back. Uh, it does t suggest that you snip two plastic uh, ends off underneath on the end of the plastic chassis to make sure that the kit sits flush. And what I did is I put the uh, super glue around the base and then put placed the, there's two locators inside that you push it down on it like a standard kit. And then this part here, there was a slight gap because um, as, as the resin is, is uh, sort of uh, shrinking slightly, uh, it it's, tries, to, tries to bend up a tiny, tiny bit. So if you leave it to, to dry as, as is, you will get a gap. So all I did is while the, the super glue was drying, squeezed it together on the hull for a few minutes to make sure that I got a good bond between those two and there was no issues. Um, the other parts like the pewter, are uh, really hard so there was no problem with uh, it bending too easily. Uh, I have left it in, in sub-assemblies uh, even though it does look like it's glued on the, in this image. Um, let's try and get some focus on there for you. Um, so I'll just give it a spin round so that you can bask in all its glory and it is possibly one of my favourite kits of all time so far. And uh, I can't wait to paint it up and add it to my uh, US list. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll break it down because like I say, some of it's uh, still loose it's for painting. So first of all, let's look at taking the top off. Uh, this is all glued together and you can see it has some interior details there, some rounds and stowage and all sorts of uh, pulleys and things. Seat at the back there that you have to put in. Um, very nice, highly detailed, had no problems at all with it going together. The top went on really flush. Um, it's just super glue, super glue gel. I will say again while I'm here, uh, we 
do sell uh, this on the website and the reason we sell it on the website is like everything that I sell on the website if I use it myself and I like it I will sell it and if I don't like it I don't sell it I use this all the time for all of my uh, non-plastic vehicles or anything that's mixed media I do prefer this to uh, the, the other stuff that we also sell I do like this also this is just normal super glue um, and this is really good as well but I just prefer gel because it just gives me that little bit of extra filling capacity uh, as well as being a glue so uh, you, it just gives you a nice solid um, joint um, so yeah we sell that on the website and also obviously we do uh, plastic magic um, which is my go-to glue it's got uh, no odor and it evaporates so you don't get nasty runs and you have to be quick with it when using it but it does give you a really nice weld and you can just dab it into joints and it'll flow in and just uh, it's just like a revelation compared to the old stuff that we used to use as a kid okay back on topic on topic topic back on topic um this i've left um loose you can see how well it's made because it just fits together and you can have this in, in instructions in different positions where it's uh, in use. Um, I've got mine in transport mode. These um, front jacks that you can put under the wheel also, when it's in storage mode, hold the, the pulleys. And there's three different um, types of uh, hook and pulley system that you can put on the end if you put a uh, a wire rope onto the into the kit uh, you can have this part here open or closed uh, I've got mine open even though it's in transport mode just because I like to see the uh, interior um, it's got the plating in there it's very nice and I always leave the tracks off because it's easy to paint them and then just put some glue on and stick them at the end. You can even, if you're weathering, put weathering powders and stuff on this part while it's off and then simply attach it at the last minute. And they, they stay on fairly well when you're um, first messing about with it or storing it. So that's how I do mine anyway. So that's the uh, recovery vehicle. Uh, it's absolutely stonking kit with lots of detail. Like I say, it's not a... Uh, it's not as easy as one of our plastic kits, but then again, like I've said before, uh, our plastic kits are really easy to <laughs> assemble. Um, so that doesn't mean that this is really tough. It's just, you know, expect. If you've used resin before, you'll know. Uh, but if you haven't used resin before, you might be thinking that it's just the same thing as plastic. And it's ours is fairly close. I must admit this. And I'm not just saying that because it's our product, but this is uh, possibly the best resin I've ever used. Um, but obviously you can't trust a word that I'm saying because <laughs> I work for the company. But there you go. Uh, that's the uh, recovery vehicle. Uh, possibly when it's painted, hoping if I can do a good job, it will be. I think it will be the, my favourite vehicle of all time so far. It's just very interesting to look at and thinking of dioramas and things like that as well. as just uh, having it on display. Um, so many options. So many options. So cool. Got to put... Uh, a crew on there as well um, so I might have to look at doing some conversions or something on that one uh, so anyway thanks for watching